Hello everyone, welcome to Come Sit at My Table. If you have been watching our videos, I think it's pretty evident that we're not home in Kentucky. We're actually in Florida in a rental house at the beach. Melissa and I like to play snowbirds, and so we are here for about seven weeks in Florida, and we're in a rental house. So, we just wanted to explain why the surroundings were different. Today, we are making soup. Now, you know that we started a couple of weeks ago with our Super Bowl Sundays, and we spell it S-O-U-P-E-R, Super Bowl, and we're doing a soup every Sunday through Super Bowl Sunday, which is February 11th. This is week three of the six. Today, we are doing a very simple soup. It goes by about 20 different names. I have always called it poor man's soup. A lot of people call it poor boy soup. Some people call it hobo soup. Some people call it bachelor soup. Sometimes it's called hamburger soup. It goes by a lot of names, poor boy soup, a lot of different names. But basically, it's a tomato and vegetable soup with hamburger in it. It really came, as far as I can find out, it came about during the Great Depression when people made this soup with whatever they had left over. And that's what my family did a lot when we had it when I was growing up. We would have this a lot on Fridays or Saturdays. And whatever my mom and dad had left from meals during the week, it went into this soup. Maybe green beans, corn, carrots, tomatoes, whatever we had, it went in. So today we're going to make what I call poor man's soup. It's a very easy recipe, but it's really good on a cool or a windy, rainy, gloomy, gray winter day. Now, even though we're in Florida, it's kind of a gloomy gray day here. The last few days have been really nice and warm and sunny. Today's a little cooler. It's in the 50s, and it's been raining. It's cleared up right now. It's not raining, but it poured the rain during the night. So it's kind of a soup day. All right, let's talk about what we're going to use today to make poor man soup. And I cannot stress enough, this is just what I'm using today, and I have no leftovers to put in it. But if we were home and we had leftovers, I would be throwing leftovers in this soup. But today I'm using things I've bought because we don't have leftovers here. So if you're going to make it, just use what you have left over. Lima beans, peas, corn, green beans, whatever you have in the refrigerator. Or you can just open cans of things and throw in. Okay, we're going to start with one tablespoon of olive oil. And in that olive oil, we are going to add one large chopped onion, or in my case today, we're adding two small chopped onions because I don't have any large ones. And we will saute that until they are kind of soft, till they kind of are translucent. And then once that is cooked a little bit, we will add three teaspoons of minced garlic. Now, if you have whole garlic and you want to mince your own, that would be three cloves. But I like to buy this already minced, and so I'm using three teaspoons. Now, I'm going to stop there instead of showing you the rest of the ingredients because I really want to get this started sauteing before we show everything else. We just need to have some time for this to cook. So, I'm going to go ahead and chop my second small onion. And you know, the words large and small are kind of relative. Um, you know, a small onion to you might be a large one to me or vice versa. But we like lots of onion. So I'm just chopping up what I consider two small onions. They might even be medium onions. But really, you can't go wrong with plenty of onion in your soup. So... Use as much or as little as you want. This is your soup. You can make it the way you want to. Dice it the way you want to. 
I like kind of a medium dice. I want to be able to see those onions in the soup, but I don't want huge pieces of onion that overpower everything. So I just kind of put as much as I want, as much as you want, whatever whatever you think. You make it yours. All right. Notice you remembered your towel under your cutting board. Yes, I have a hard time remembering to do that, but it sure does help. I'm glad you mentioned that. If you will just dampen a towel, it's not wet, it's just damp. I've gotten it wet and wrung it out as well as I could and put it on your counter under your cutting board. It keeps your cutting board from sliding. I try to always remember to do that, but sometimes I forget and then it's sliding all over the place. Okay, so I'm going to take my olive oil. Let's start our fire. I'm gonna turn it up until we get this hot. I'm just going to add about a tablespoon in here, just a glug. And then I'm going to add my onions and let those get started sweating down because we want to get those cooked a little bit. They don't have to be completely cooked because we're going to cook this once we get everything in. It's going to simmer for a while and let everything kind of meld together. So you don't have to cook your onions completely. It's not like they have to be completely done. And you know, once you get them in there, if you see any big pieces, just chop them up. Okay, so that's done. Let's let that cook for a little bit. Now let's talk about what else we're going to put in this soup today. We're using two pounds of ground round or ground chuck or ground beef or whatever you want to use. Um, I like plenty of hamburger in mine. I like plenty of beef in mine. So I'm using two pounds today. You can actually get by with one pound in this amount of soup if you want to. I'm just a meat eater, so I put plenty in there. One pound would do it, but we're using two. We're also using two boxes, which is eight cups of beef broth. We'll use both of those. Now, if I was going to, we're, we're going to talk in a minute about the pasta that we're putting in this. If I were going to cook my pasta first and then add it to the soup, I would probably use only about six cups of beef broth but I'm just going to put my pasta right in and let it cook in the soup. So it will soak up a lot of that juice. So I'm using eight cups of beef broth instead of six. It just saves you dirtying another pot. So I'm, I'm not going to dirty another pot for that. So I'm using eight cups. We're also using a 14 and a half ounce can of diced tomatoes. Now I got the ones that have onion and garlic in it. You can find some that say they have basil and all kinds of spices and herbs, but I'm just using this one it has onion and garlic in it. You pick the one you want. I'm also using a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce. Let me stir this. Look at those onions are already cooking. Um, a 29 ounce can of tomato sauce. And by the way, with the diced tomatoes, we're gonna to use juice and all. We're just dumping it all in there. Now, the next thing we're gonna put in is two tablespoons of sugar. And you might say, well, why are you putting sugar in, in a vegetable beef soup? The, the sugar is not to make it sweet. The sugar is just to cut the acidity of that tomato sauce and those tomatoes. You won't taste the sugar, I promise. Now, if you put a ton of it in, you would, but two tablespoons is not going to make your soup sweet. Those two tablespoons of sugar are just going to cut the acidity a little bit and help it have a little bit better flavor. The next thing we're going to use is two teaspoons of dried basil and two teaspoons of dried oregano. If you have fresh, use it. But for me, this is just much easier. Then we're going to add a 15 ounce bag of mixed vegetables. Normally, if we were making this at home, I wouldn't use a bag of mixed vegetables. I would use whatever vegetables we had left over from other meals during the week. But we just got to Florida a couple of days ago. I don't have leftovers, so we're using these mixed vegetables. And you can use any combination of vegetables you want to. If you'd rather do cans, use a can of veg all 
or buy a can of corn and a can of green beans and a can of whatever and just use those. Let me turn this down just a hair. Um, you can put in what you want to. One thing I don't put in is potatoes because I am using pasta. And we are going to use two cups of, I'm using small shells. Traditionally, in poor man soup, you would use elbow macaroni. But I just really like small shells. So we're using two cups of that today. And we are at the beach. And we are at the <laughs> beach. So you kind of need the shells, right? Um, so you, you can put in it whatever you want to, whichever pasta you want. But because we're putting pasta in, I don't put potatoes in. I just, I think that's too much starch, I guess. So if you want to put potatoes in, you can certainly do that. Get the small whole potatoes, quarter them, put them in. That's up to you. The last thing that we will use today is some mild cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar. And we just put that on top. That's to go on at the end after you have put the soup in your bowl, you sprinkle some cheese on top of it. That's not a necessity. That's not something you have to do. But we think it's good in there. Okay, our onions have started cooking. And so we are going to add our garlic. And we're going to put three teaspoons of garlic. You want to come around here? Sure. And on this side where you can see the... And if you don't like garlic or it's you think three teaspoons is too much, then don't use that much. Just put what you like. I'm doing about three teaspoons. Oh my goodness, that's good. It really does, it doesn't it? It does. It? Right okay. to the onions and garlic. I know, you're right. Can't go wrong with onions and garlic. Now, you don't want to cook the garlic for too long. If you let it sit in there and cook and cook and cook, you're going to burn the garlic. Garlic burns really easily. So don't, don't wait too long. Once you put it in, maybe a minute or even less, um, just get it heated up. Let it get down in there and heat up a little bit. And then go ahead and add your other ingredients because you don't want to burn that garlic. I'm gonna start the hamburger though, right? I am. Our onions are already sweated out. So now that the garlic's in, I'm gonna start with the hamburger. Now, once we get this hamburger cooked, we will have to drain it. And I don't expect, I hope there's not a lot of grease. I've never used, this came from Publix grocery store. And honestly, I don't know what their hamburger's like. Um, I'm hoping there's not a lot of grease to drain off, but we'll see. All right, so we're going to put that in. We'll let that start cooking. And I'm just going to chop it up a little bit. We do not want this to be really, really fine. You want some chunks of, of burger in there. You want to be able to see that beef. So don't chop it too much. Let it start to cook. Okay, I'm going to turn it up just there. Let it start to cook. Let the beef brown. Um, you will have to chop it up some, but you don't want to chop it up too much. And then once the beef is completely done, we will drain it. And then we will come back and show you adding everything else in. But it's going to take a few minutes to cook the beef, and then we'll have to drain it. So we'll be right back. Our beef has browned, and we have drained it. I am going to tell you that I don't drain it completely. I don't make it dry. You can see there's no grease standing in the bottom, but I don't make sure that every little speck of grease is off there because grease equals some flavor. Now, everything else we have just needs to be dumped in. I'm gonna turn this up so that it can start to come to a boil. So everything else can just go in the kettle. And I will tell you that this amount should easily serve six people. And that's what we're serving tonight. We have six people here. 
there are three couples and so six of us will eat this and this should serve all six of us with this we are going to serve um, cornbread. cornbread so we do have a cornbread recipe on our site so if you want to go back and look at our videos and find our cornbread recipe you can do that this is our can of diced tomatoes we're just putting everything in juice and all everything goes in the pot don't waste that juice that's on there it's delicious and our can of tomato sauce goes in. I'm going to scrape that out. Use my spatula. I'm sorry, I'm left-handed and doing this backward. But can't help that I'm left-handed. I'm gonna make sure I get all that out of there though. I'm gonna leave any. Okay. Now, our sugar, and we don't want to leave that out because we do want to cut the acidity of that sugar. By the way, you can use brown sugar. I have used brown sugar in this before, and it gives it a little different flavor from the molasses that's in that brown sugar. But if I'm being totally honest with you, I'll tell you that I do like the white sugar in it better. Okay, it tells me to cut this. Let's see, I saw a pair of scissors right there. When you're in a rental house, you have to just look for things. <laughs> Takes a little getting used to. We bring a lot with us. I'm, I am not joking when I say that we probably bring half of our kitchen with us. We bring a lot of things out of our kitchen just because we want to make sure we have what we need to cook with. We'll get all those vegetables out there. So, get some more down in there. Okay. Um, but you can't bring everything. We only have so much room. And by the way, I did stir those vegetables in straight from the bag frozen. They will thaw as the soup cooks. Oh, this looks so good, Tom. Thank you, babe. It really does. Okay. Now, let's put our spices in. We want two i'm going to do two good teaspoons of oregano and two teaspoons of basil and i'm doing kind of heaping spoons because we want plenty in there okay now let's stir all that in before we put our pasta in and we do have to bring this to a boil because we have to cook our pasta. We have to cook our small shells. And will you cover it to cook it? I will not. You can if you want to, but I just usually don't. I just let it cook. And I, I only let it cook until the shells are completely done. It takes about, I don't know what this box says, but usually like on elbow macaroni, it says six to seven minutes. But no matter what pasta you use, and again, you can use any pasta you want to, but whatever pasta you use, you should probably cook it to the al dente stage. You want it soft, but not mushy. And then taste it to see. Get, get one or two pieces of the pasta out and just try it. See, see if it's ready. All right, so there's one cup. There's two cups. Okay. And we're just going to let that cook. Now, if that cooks and I feel like it needs a little more pasta in it, you can always use put some more in it and let it cook for a few minutes. But usually two cups does it. And I really do like those small shells in there. Okay. Now, we have to bring this to a boil and let those shells, those small shells cook. And then once they're done, we will come back and we will taste it for you. So we'll be back in just a few minutes. Our pasta has cooked in the soup for about seven to eight minutes. And it is soft. I have tested one of them to make sure. And it is ready. Now, I want you to notice 
that this is thick. It's got a lot of vegetables and pasta and meat in it. It's not a brothy soup, even though it has a lot of broth in it. If you want to stretch it, if you want it to be more brothy, more liquidy, you can always add more beef broth. You could even add a little water if you wanted to. That wouldn't hurt anything. Also, you will notice we did not add salt. We are sharing this with some other people in our house who um, some of them have issues with high blood pressure and whatever. So we have not added salt to this, but if you wanted to add salt, you could certainly do that. I'd probably start with about a teaspoon, taste it, see what you think. Um, but you wouldn't, you don't have to do salt at all. Also, this freezes really well. So after you have eaten, if you have leftovers and you want to freeze the rest of it, do that. Put it in Ziploc baggies or individual um, containers like Rubbermaid or Tupperware, and you can certainly freeze this. All right, let's do, it is hot. Let's do a little taste test. Let me get my hand out from under it. Okay, I've got pasta, I've got carrots, peas. Get a piece of hamburger right there. There we go. Some of all of it. I see a big onion. I love the onion in it. Mmm. That hits the spot. That's a great winter soup. That's really good. Okay, by the way, if it were just for the two of us, I would put some salt in there. It's fine the way it is, but I think a little bit of salt would probably enhance the flavor some. Thank you so much for watching our videos. We are really happy that you're joining us for Super Bowl Sundays. And remember, we have three left. We're going to do a, a different soup video every Sunday through Super Bowl Sunday. So we appreciate you being here. If you would, go right below this video and give us a thumbs up. Just click that button where you see a thumbs up that just says you like the video. If you've not already, we would appreciate you clicking that subscribe button, the little notification bell, and the word all. Remember that right under the video where you see the title of this recipe, it might be poor man soup, poor boy soup, bachelor soup, hobo soup, hamburger soup. All of those are the same soup. But where you see the title, click that title. That box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe right there for you. And our contact information is under the recipe. And we do appreciate your comments. Melissa reads those to me. On our drive from Kentucky to Florida, she read hours and hours worth of comments to me. Some of them we laughed. A few of them we kind of teared up. There were just hundreds and hundreds of really nice comments, and we do appreciate all those. So if you want, leave us a comment. We enjoy reading those. Most of all, we want you to remember that no matter whether we're in Kentucky or in Florida, you are always welcome to... Come sit at my table. Have a great day.